San Francisco, we turned back the clock and stood by as some 400 orphan children swarmed aboard early this afternoon and the wonders never ceased until they all trooped ashore again at dinner time. He transformed the upper decks into a pirate playground with the crews suitably wearing eye patches, swords and black moustaches. Some of the seemingly inexhaustible supply of nautical outlaws manned the cruiser's boats and with pirate guns which boomed and shot huge puffs of smoke into the sky they carried children around the bay to the tune of pirate shanties. Uthant, the United Nations delegate, passes us in a motor yacht. Pirate engineers also operated a full-scale merry-go-round on the foredeck. Swings, a seesaw and a cable-operated spaceship. Delighting the crowd, our culinary department dished out jam tarts and funny-shaped donuts, which seemed to please the youngsters. We found that other pirates had seized the ship's winches and the donkey engines. They scooped up children by the bucket boots to swing them high into the air and over the vessel's sides before they were lowered gently back to the deck. And they were all well behaved, so indeed were we, and according to the editor of the Oakland Gazette, the editorial said, the behaviour, conduct and bearing of these British seamen has been perfect. We have been pleased and proud to have them with us, and the bonds of friendship are the stronger for their having called. High praise indeed.
Seattle. We proudly entered Seattle with our four-inch guns firing the national salute and with the United States flag flying at the main. Our arrival coincided with the beginning of Seattle Seafair Week and we were there along with many other units of the United States fleet. Vice Admiral Sir John Stevens and Commodore Fuller go ashore to receive the welcome address by the May and Seafair Committee. The Blue Jacket Guard marched for the first time, other than in Bermuda, since Rio, and the Marine Band too increased the dignity of what was in fact a carnival. On the 5th of October 1955 we de-ammunitioned at Folly Point. Never has ammunition gone so quickly over the side. 
everybody worked with a grin and a song until it was finished. By the afternoon on Wednesday the 6th of October, and in no time at all, the wives, children, relatives and friends, and wives-to-be were on board. And we were so confused by a kaleidoscope of colour and reunion that those of us who had nobody mostly kept out of the way.